Rotation is a hot topic around here at the Chance Cube. While we still have one more set before it happens, we anticipate it coming and what kind of change we will feel in the game. In anticipation to their removal from the standard format, we are looking back at each of these sets from the first block. This week, we share our favorites from Awakenings and the cards that are current staples in deck building. This is episode 103, The Best of Awakenings. You have been well trained. No, you don't have to I carry know. a sword to be powerful. No. I won't fail you. Oh, do not. I'm not afraid. Oh, please don't try. All right. Oh, we're back. Oh, we're, we're doing back. a show. Yes. Welcome, everyone. Uh, you gave me a hard time. What? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Open your windows. I have my windows open, all three of them. Four, if you include <laughs> yourself. You're a win. Okay. Anyways. Um, welcome to episode 103. Where we're going to talk about Awakenings. Yes. The set that came out two years ago. Gosh. Uh, I know. Two, two years. years ago, almost, almost a month from now. Well, actually, almost two months from now. Crazy, crazy to think that Awakenings has been around that long, and we've been we've been doing this that long as well. Um, crazy, but yeah, no, it's amazing that uh, we're we're looking at forward towards across the galaxy, and and we're looking that. Did you say we're looking gonna... across the galaxy? Yeah, I could have I could have gotten rid of forward and huh? just side. just gone straight there. I didn't. Um, of hey, course, the rotation the time. <clears throat> Next week, uh, rotation is not going to. Uh, take effect until the set after Across the Galaxy, but uh, it's time to look back at some of those cards so we want to get one last good play in. And uh, I think this is this is the time. This is the time to talk about those cards that are that are super important. Um, but it can't be a show until we find out what has Mike and Kim been up to since we talked to you last. Mike, you go first. Are you sure I should go first? He's yeah. going to trump both of us, so it's okay. Uh, I know, then I'll, like, us. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> lately I have been making a push to start getting uh, some voiceover work and doing some voice acting. I think it's, it's, I don't know. I really enjoy it. So, so jealous. Uh, I hooked up with a local artist here that does motion comics and we are going to, we are, or we're currently working on a project to do a uh, motion comic for star Wars invasion. So uh, awesome. Yeah. And I'm doing a couple of the characters on that. So that's so cool. Yeah, that's like really exciting. I'm like my second project I get to do uh Star Wars for my voice acting, so I'm really excited. We're pretty proud of our Mike Hill. I will say that. Yeah. <laughs> See Jason guys. now says that you're gonna be too good for us for I'm those of here, you guys. not watching <laughs> the stream. Oh, this is funny. No, that's great. That's actually really exciting. I can't wait uh to share that because yeah. One of the things that we we pride on being Star Wars fans over here, and not just fans of the game, but fans of the franchise, and uh, any bit of Star Wars is awesome. And the fact that one of our own could uh, participate in uh, in a fan project like that is is really cool. So I'm excited. To, pretty awesome, man. To see that come to fruition. Yeah, he's got I'm such so a cool excited. voice anyway, right? Right. I'm. I know I'm not the only person that thinks that. Thanks, everybody. Right? I get weird uh, compliments when I play online gaming. So. Uh, yeah, it's it's been ever since I got the equip the newer equipment. Like people would be like, "Hey, bro, uh, I just want to tell you, you got a really nice voice." Like when I play <laughs> Call of Duty, it's really weird. It's I don't know, it's awkward. <laughs> uh, you know, the chat feature on Call of Duty can be a little weird, regardless. Yeah, it is. Uh, I guess first. Wow. So okay, we got was- eerily <laughs> quiet. It's like we like we rehearsed this, uh, which we didn't. Um, I saw. Well, sorry, I, I started reading the chat. Uh, the, there's a there's a guy here, a new here. Uh, Fragus first. Hi, new here. Learning about tabletop games. What is Awakenings? Uh, Awakenings was the first release of Star Wars Destiny, which is a card and dice game. Uh, is your Destiny pimping uh, his podcast on our? Twitch stream. He's not. He's just back from vacation, and I so think, he's he's, I think uh... he's trying to take our <laughs> listeners. No, he's no, not. No, he's sharing the love. So <laughs> they, he found uh, he found your Destiny podcast first, and then found us. So I'm okay with that. <laughs> got it. Got it. Those are Destiny guys. They're pretty cool when they're not they on vacation are. all the time. Your Destiny is pretty cool. Just kidding, Claus. But are you? 
No. He's no, awesome. No. Like I won't <laughs> I'll never he is one of the nicest humans you will ever meet. Agreed. And he deserved a vacation. And he plays good decks too. So uh, I I can't really add much to this except that we had a baby sh- Oh, so we had a baby shower. You're gonna like this. We had a baby like- shower. Oh yeah, I think Aww. I knew this is this, fun. This story. So if you're not most, of, I'm sure most of you out there are not friends with me personally on Facebook, but um, you I be. I love my in laws very much, and she decided to decorate our baby shower in a Star Wars theme, knowing that we're naming our child after a Star Wars character, very nice. uh, which is which is fine, you know. And so she uh, she knows very little about Star Wars. Um, so I, I appreciated I, I, the attempt. Uh, the, the decorations were the thought. The thought is the word that you wanted to go for. You appreciate the thought. The thought. I, well, I mean, I appreciate the attempt. Uh, there were like, I mean, the balloons were maybe not necessarily terribly appropriate for a for a baby shower, even though they were Star Wars balloons. You should be. Why are those not hanging in your office? I know. Behind you. Oh, they they did not come home with us. There was a there was a giant uh, R two D two like balloon which was pretty kind of cool there was like rebels and like the inquisitor was on a balloon and i was like that guy is gonna like kill people that's yeah that's why amazing. wouldn't you have brought the shower. r2d2 balloon home because i couldn't fit anything in my car anyways so oh. so she decorated the tables with with plushies like uh plush from like um uh, like pop plushes so like you know giant heads and little bodies and they were really cute except that they were all villains um so it's like there was like mike would have liked that that's my kind of baby shower <laughs> there was there was a first so the villains there was a first order stormtrooper and there was snoke and there was um the uh praetorian guard and then this fourth one i pulled out well then and bb9e was also in there yes. and this fifth one i pulled up and i was like what what is this why do i not know the star wars character and then it took me five seconds to realize this is the white power ranger <laughs> I saw that. That was so cool. <laughs> I haven't stopped laughing about that, honestly, since you sent me that picture. So if anyone wants to frame me on Facebook or whatever, I'll share that. One picture. of these things is not like the other. So funny. Anyways, that's my story. We're, we're so far away from Destiny at this point in time. Yeah, Kim, why don't you bring us back home? So while you all were sleeping and were hanging out or getting back from vacation, the Change Cube turned two. Two years old. We can, It like- started walk on two feet now. and and say some words <laughs> and repeat things that you say <laughs> but yeah so we didn't do anything super super huge but um but thank you to everybody in the community anything. that got us here for two years mm-hmm. so i think we all consider ourselves very very lucky to get to do what we do every week um play destiny chat with you guys about it stream about it um try to bring you the best content we possibly can and we've got a really cool community and other, like I mentioned on our Facebook post and great content creators to work with. So um, if it weren't for all you guys and all these other content creators, we wouldn't have such a great community of destiny and we wouldn't have been here for two years. So mm-hmm. That's happy birthday to us. And what started you- as a little Jason podcast. Yeah. If anybody, can, all this. If anybody finds episode one, don't listen to it. <laughs> It can't Just be that like bad. the real Star Wars episode one. Oh, <laughs> sick bird. I'm just, well, kidding, thank you I'm just kidding. I like episode one. Don't. Thank you two oh, for no. getting us, getting us here to, to episode, uh, episode 103, two years down the road. I uh, really appreciate two of you and all of you Thanks, contributed. And of course, everyone in the Chansky family has been a huge help getting us here um, from social media management to streaming games out in different states to writing articles and doing youtube videos and everything the family continues to to morph and change over the t- over the months but uh we couldn't do it without everybody because hey. i'm that's right shoot i've got a baby coming for you know i'm gonna be very useless very soon hey i did it all i was a fan first and then i wrote and now i'm on the stream boom that's well, true you, you're the one who made us start streaming that is true that's, that's true, true. And not made us like suggested it was a good idea, and, and then, then he got saw... me on board, and then we just sort of dragged Jason into it. Yeah, it did take me. It yeah. We're like, come anyway. on, buddy. Come on. I like it. See? I think it's working out good. I'm really. I mean, we get to talk to all these people. Like, yeah, your Jesse podcast at three in the morning. I won't. I won't lie. There's a part of me that misses rolling out of bed at nine a.m. and not having to look remotely presentable to record a podcast with you guys. True, but. This is way more fun to be able to interact with everybody and chat. And so I don't mind having to get presentable. Well, I'm not that presentable, but you know, whatever. Yeah. I do have to put pants on now. 
<laughs> <laughs> That's true. So before you didn't. Before I didn't. Oh uh, well, let's get let's get to the subject matter at hand, of course, and that is Star Wars Destiny. So let's roll into the news. <laughs> Let him take that back, huh? Neil, find out what you need. <laughs> so, uh, the news was light, but of course, the competitive scene continues to blossom here towards the end of the um, Way of the Force meta, as as well as the end of the national season. Of nationals around the world are starting are happening, um, thanks to the great coverage by our friends over at Your Destiny Podcast. Uh, the yeah. Belgian Nationals concluded uh with with an interesting surprise win so we had 48 players at belgian nationals um if you look at the deck list that uh or the the assortment of decks that uh the your destiny team uh posted on their facebook page you'll notice that a lot of them were a lot of the repeat decks were the top meta decks we saw at us nationals and gen con and and uh euros um except for the winner yeah yeah so crazy that yeah i was watching i was following some of their posts i didn't get to watch the stream but i was following some of their posts and i, I kept going really like yeah. well that's kind of cool i bet nobody saw that coming and yeah so, awesome go ahead okay so i i've played a lot of yoda honda variations and early in the meta he was very that was a very easy deck to take down i yep. wonder what's changed this far into the meta that has made it that powerful to take down Belgian nationals is it that it was just very unexpected in the meta and nobody has has seen it or it do they have some sort of sauce that is like making it finally like just hum better than it has before it was, um yeah i wonder if it's a combination the of the hondo two honestly like, i haven't seen a deck list though just choke hondo and then you're done like that that game's over after that so I think a changed? lot of it has to do with with taking the uh, special chaining action and making sure all your upgrades are are special driven. And so I think the previous Yoda Hondo was very much on okay, use Hondo to get rid of the resources, and then Hondo special will have to do the three damage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But now it seems mm -hmm. to be Hondo special gets rid of the resources in of itself, uh, and then using the combination of four speed cunning. Uh, and maybe you've got like either Obi's lightsaber, you've got Force Wave, um, you've got the light bow, uh, those types of mm. upgrades whose specials do three damage, and Force Wave who does you know a total of six damage to the whole field, and this massive three wide meta that's huge. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think I, I don't know. I mean, those it's, like you said, those two characters don't do damage in and of themselves. I mean, Hondo does unless you pay them. So. Right. Is it, it is interesting to see those two, and maybe because Hondo does choke resources and continues to man choke those resources early on, it mm. makes those decks that are relying on those resources um, easier to take down. That's true. Uh, hold on, I'm just reading your destiny. Uh, he, uh, Klaus said it, it was, was middle, middle insider this time. Yeah, so Klaus said it was uh, middle middle aggro. The that too easily could kill a Yoda Hondu, but with vehicle domination, it is more time to get its shenanigans going. That's true. Like, yeah, aggro. Then that's exactly that's what I play. Is yeah, that aggro. makes that's total sense. I, you could just you could just wait two turns and with your two aggro characters mow down Hondu while paying paying him, and then Yoda's done for basically. But with these vehicle decks, they can't do almost anything until they get their vehicles they out, get ramped up which yep. gives enough time for the ramping of yoda and it's mm -hmm. choking at the same time so yeah oh yeah that's true so it would make it a lot harder to get those vehicles out so yeah. definitely a meta definitely a meta call that's there cool yeah that's a yeah that's a very good meta that, call. that's cool man and yeah i was excited to see that i, I like not seeing i i like seeing the nationals not be the same old thing that wins i think that's cool and we are in that phase where mm -hmm. there's enough good decks that the next nationals or whatever, the next big event is mm -hmm. looking at the last big event to say, okay, what's the best deck to combat these decks that obviously you're going to show up in force. So the um, mm -hmm. Snoke Afro battle droid deck was well represented at the Belgian nationals, which is the deck that took down us nationals right. mm -hmm. yet. Here's Yoda Hondo coming in to beat a Thrawn Snoke, which also had a very good showing at us nationals. Um, and here, here in this three wide meadow, we've got two, two wide, uh, two wide decks that took the top two seats. So, uh, pretty awesome. 
to yeah. see that happen. Uh, love to see this meta continue to shift. It's kind of a bummer that uh, those who are focused in locally are kind of like done with the competitive scene in a way. Whereas uh, if you had that global look out there and, and all the, the great coverage coming out of uh, Europe and, and that side of the world, um, there's still a lot of destiny to follow, uh, even mm-hmm. if we're not uh, we're not trying to figure out what that next best deck is over here yet. Yeah. yeah would... Your Met still could shape the meta going into the next set. Mm-hmm. I'm curious to see uh, what that Yoda Hondu... Uh lineup was like all the matchups throughout the day did he just get really good matchups all day just like vehicles all day and never had to sit across from an aggro or did he take down an aggro at some point at least one like i'm i'm really curious to see the, mm. the total matchups and how many rounds did they play yeah i don't I i'm sure we'll I honestly did not uh, look <laughs> claws don't fall asleep yet we need you Claws, give me we all need the you in the chat. We're gonna have to get it. We may have to bring. We may have to figure out a time we can get claws on. And talk to him about this. We can't. We can't rely on our chat to do our show for us, people. Yeah, I did not do. Uh, any it's worked sometimes. I'm just saying. When they like when they heckle you for like 20 minutes, it's like gold. <laughs> True. We've lost all our Jason hecklers, which is great. Um, which is great. So uh, gonna... <laughs> I I finally got all the footage from U.S. Nationals up on uh the youtube so if you head over yeah. to YouTube, uh, you can check the reruns of all those matches uh from you know day one a round one nice. all the way through the top two um there's a whole playlist if you want to just sit and watch it uh binge watch u.s national star uh, destiny footage um you can check it out if you haven't seen any of our footage over there uh don't get discouraged by day one a footage because day two day one b was much better when we got our better camera working uh but it's all still there you can hear the sweet sounds of ruben sanchez and and his various <laughs> guest commentators oh, such as ruben sanchez myself and todd Rowe and billy andrew cox and billy fallon all joined in at some point in time throughout the weekend a little bit of me but meh so well and we'll share that link over on the facebook page i'll make sure we get that up this week and um right and i know now. we have a i know we have a mill article coming out this week as well so not by uh, ruben what i know not by ruben is no. it a guest guest uh writer it, it is nice i'm excited uh, about that. yeah so i've had a sneak ever, peek i like it i like this article so if you head over to our youtube page uh just please hit the subscribe button uh we'd love to get over a thousand uh here awfully soon so uh we really appreciate that and uh without further ado uh, we've got a lot of cards from awakenings to talk about today we should just talk about all of them we should t- uh not all because of them, but i know but as i started flipping through the binder i kept going "Ooh, i like that card Ooh, i like that card Ooh, i like that card so i have my handy dandy binder in case things get serious <laughs> Well, and uh, more serious. We're not very serious here at the Chance Cube, but and and not that serious. You know, Mike, I just can't seem to get the cards I need in the booster packs I bought. I'm still missing a Mother Talzin, a Darth Maul, and I need some more battle droids. That five wide droid deck isn't going to build itself, and I have all these extra Yodas. Seriously, Kim, I told you, check out Armada Games. You can buy and sell Destiny cards on their website, shoparmada.com. It's just a few simple clicks and bam, you are done. I used it just the other day, and now I got two, count them, two mall sabers heading my way. Hey, what are you guys talking about? We're in the middle of a break here. Jason, you know how you've got all those extra cards from all those booster boxes you open? Mike says you can sell them online super easy. No way, seriously? How? I've got to make room before this next set comes out. Jason, whether you're new to the game or a seasoned vet, Armada Games has just what you're looking for. You can buy and sell your Destiny singles all from the comfort of your living room, pre-order the latest sets of boosters, and find the droids you are looking for. You can also check out their selection of Destiny accessories. And you'll get free shipping on orders over $75. For an even better deal, be sure to use the coupon code THECHANCECUBE and receive 5% off your Destiny purchase. Visit their website at shoparmada.com. Armada Games. Get in here and game. But you know what I always say, speak softly and drive a big tank. So we wanted to talk about Awakenings. Uh, and first, we're going to start off with our favorite cards <laughs> from the set. Yeah. Uh, I asked Mike and Kim to pick their favorites. 
uh, or favorite, I think I said, and they, they ended up with three piece, but that's fine. I'd um, like to add more, but Jason will let me. No, we've got a lot of cards to get through. I found we do, more as I went through the binder. After we uh, get through these cards, uh, we've got some pretty cool stats from U.S. <gasps> Nationals uh, that we want to get into. So first off, Mike Hill, uh, you've got three wonderful cards from Awakenings that I think we still see a lot of play uh, that are very important to the game. Uh, and we'll be sorely missed, except for maybe Sith Holocron. I think that can go. But That's been gone a while. <laughs> it doesn't Let me know. Anymore. Like, Yeah. Well, why Tactical Mastery, Sith Holocron, and Holo Blaster? Why are these your Awakenings cards? Okay, so uh, Tactical Mastery, not be, not so much because it's a great card, but because of the memories I have playing that card. Uh, oh, the memories. Yeah, so uh, playing Matt Cousineau on Skype, he I, I don't know if he just didn't see a ton of red villain in his meta, but whenever I played this card, it would be like a table flipper for him. He would always just like, <laughs> he would want me all the time. But when I played this card, he would just get upset. And it was just it, it was always such a good card to play. It was like it was tactical as all get out. Like you really got you get two extra turns to do a ton of damage, especially when you're playing red blue, stuff like that. So uh such a fun card. Uh, it's still getting a ton of play now. I see it in a lot of red villain decks, especially at a one cost, which is really cheap. Uh, it will be sorely missed. Um, Sith Holocron. That when I when I played my uh, Vader Raider decks, this this was such a good card mm -hmm. to uh, to try and get out any, you know, get out like your uh, your uh, mind probes. Mm -hmm. uh, force force choke, force chokes, like just a, you could get a ton of cool stuff out with the Sith Holocron. Mm -hmm. uh, when people saw that card come out, it was very daunting. It was mm -hmm. a, it was the first yeah. card I feel like where people were really paying that top dollar to get it on the secondary market in this set. Mm -hmm. Besides Vader, mm -hmm. I think this was like that. This was like that card to have. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, I think this was an early attempt at. Um, it, it was early on used because resources, there was no real good resource generation. So this is a way to kind of get around that problem. Nowadays, we just, you know, snoke a Thrawn and all of a sudden you've got a thousand resources. But right. uh, yeah, Sith Holocron, yeah, totally get it. I It was weird to see this card drop out of the meta so quickly. Uh, after the second set, uh, it was really, it was gone. I think, uh, I think blue ability upgrades were no longer... That's, That's what cool. I was gonna say. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like, and I, I feel like we haven't gotten as many in, in other sets either. Like See, the warrant putting it in your deck. I bet you in set seven, eight, and nine, we'll see a lot of blue abilities because Sith Holocron will no longer be in the in the <laughs> legal. Yeah, you're probably. Right. Now you gotta pay for them. Yeah, and then uh, finally, Holdout Blaster. Uh, I loved playing this card. Good one. It, the ambush was just so fun to play redeploy gave you that uh that really tactical decision on where you wanted to place it because you knew you could get it rolled out you get it resolved and then after that character died you get it moved over and get it rolled out a second time um it worked with a lot of characters abilities where you'd get you know additional actions for playing ambush or additional abilities shields whatever sure uh, dice sides were great uh just such a great card and it's still seen play it's yeah it's one of the mm -hmm. best two drops uh you know still oh yes yeah. for yeah. sure and i think it's uh i mean it was one of the most expensive rares when it came out no one could find them i think it's been kind of replaced by hidden blaster in a lot of decks but uh yeah if you need if you want more double the power you definitely see holdouts come out as well mm -hmm. um and the promo for that card is it's slick Let's see. I think I might have one around. I don't, oh, yeah. You have. I don't have one of those promos. Bam. It's very nice. Yeah. It looks right good. Ooh, slick Rick. That's cool. You should accidentally send one of those to me. I should accidentally send one to you. We'll I don't see have one of those. One laying around. Um, so if oh, anybody has listened to the show long enough, you know that Kim has a, has a card that she tends to talk about a lot um, that doesn't see a lot of play. It should. It should. It should. Uh, <laughs> that one too <laughs> that one too um so kim why don't you tell us about your three cards all right so one of my favorite cards to play in the first set was awakening and i hear you guys laughing already and laugh it up i don't care so one cost support one dollar 
And it lets you exhaust the support to resolve one of your dice showing a modified side as if it was not modified. So with my excellent skill rolling ability, when I left that modified plus three on a jetpack sitting out there, I could use this card and get three damage and not have that die be useless on the t- table. This card should see more play. I will tell you, I have never, ever I'd had love this it. card played against me. Ever. You're all missing out. Ever. I have Someday, played. you all look back and wish that you'd played Awakening more. This will be. And it has Maz on it. Look, this is the Black Lotus of of destiny uh, everybody's throwing this card away. worked for me and my terrible rolling abilities i'll just say that all right I know i'm trying to see what else i loved out there starter deck only so you had to get a right you had to get the uh the ray starter deck to pick this one up i think it's a great card i mean you know what in theory it really is it's a one cost drop support uh and if you just stack a ton of modified big modified sides and you're just and there were a lot. Like I mean, hold up. Blaster has a plus two. The DL44 blaster had a plus two. Um, the IQA blaster had a plus three. The jetpack had a plus two and a plus three. Yeah. Luke Skywalker's lightsaber plus three. All those like that's just damage that was sitting out on the table because in that first meta when all you had was awakenings, you'd lose. I mean, they'd get your dice off the table and then you're just stuck with those modified sides. So. Mm-hmm. Most underused card in the useful card in the set. My opinion. You heard it here first, kids. Boo, I like it. Well, you sold me. Probably not first because I've talked about it like 300 times. Sold me. All right. Moving on. I'm the done with it. Best defense and electric. May, maybe the last time I talk about it. It might maybe. be. Which one? You, whichever one you want to flip. It probably won't be. But Let's which one you got up? The, the got best defense. The All right. So the best defense. I was pro- busy I playing. I do now that one. I do have. I have the promo for best defense. That's a little bit thicker cardstock then. Oh, nice anyway, game. so best defense is a red villain card. That's another one cost. It's an event. Deal one of your red characters three damage to remove up to two of an opponent's die. So I guess it does say dice on here. So I was busy playing heroes and awakenings. My my good old. Well, I did a little bit of blue because I used Awakening, but primarily once that died, I played my Han Leia and I wasn't using best defense. And then I got it played on me and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> like you get to remove two of my die. Like it's a great removal card. And I think it, I've still seen it played fairly recently oh, because you've got those. Yeah. Like you've got oh. those you know, secondary characters on your team specifically for stuff like this. Mm-hmm. Into the garbage shoot, stuff like this. Um, so that was a card that caught me by surprise. And that's that, that that's it, like what Mike said. It's almost the memories of having it played on you. I just remember the what? The first time I had this card played on me because I hadn't been looking at villain cards at all. Mm. And so this sucker good. has stuck around to haunt me for a lot of sets. And then I've finally played some villains and used it kick some butt nice best fence and then my last card is <gasps> electroshock so i have that cool little promo you got that one i know you have this one mikey that is one of the best promos ever i think i yeah i totally agree yeah. i don't even know that i kept that I yeah i don't even know that i kept any of the original versions of this card i think mm-hmm. i only kept promos of it right. um so that another another one cost. See, I like my cheap events. Um, spot a yellow character to remove a die showing a value of two or lower. So this was a staple in my Han deck. Um, and I still hated it. I still to this day hate getting this card played on me because it's still index. It's still an absolutely wonderful remover, removal card at one cost. Because there's still an awful lot of die out there that are going to hit two or lower. Oh, yeah. That includes specials. That includes... You know, C three PO's dice. I'm curious what an electro shot goes for. It that goes card, back in my binder, is what it goes for. Uh, that card was always a very expensive uncommon. Mm-hmm. It was. You're right. It was. Those. That was one of the harder ones to get your hands on. And then once you once yeah, you did, you didn't let go. It's still a two dollar uncommon. It's not bad. 
from oh, that yeah. set because yeah, a lot of the prices in that set are dropping. Common. But I mean, I was selling them for five bucks, you know, mm -hmm. back when that set was, you know, still very relevant. And for sure. Yeah, that's crazy. It's still two dollars, two dollar card. Yeah, those are great cards. Jason, I'm looking at your list and I think there's one. <laughs> nope, you have it on here. So I'll wait. I was going to say it's an honorable mention because it played such a big role in the very first worlds, but we'll get to it. Yeah, so uh, I've got uh, three cards here, uh, it's kind of for right. each for different reasons. Um, Launch Bay, I think, is uh, one of those cards that we continue to see attempted to use uh, in Stupid. in some sort of crazy weirdo draw all your cards and salvo a range damage off your Launch Bay kind of deck. Uh, people want to make it work. Um, it'd be interesting to see now with, I mean, resource generation on the on the villain side has gotten so crazy that those big cost supports can come down the table. We haven't seen that on the hero side as much. Mm -hmm. um, I right. doubt this card will ever see play uh, in that respect. Um, but it is kind of interesting to see that, that Launch Bay has still kind of continued to resurface for its kind of um, glorious jankiness quirkiness yeah it is pretty quirky um yeah. boundless ambition i think was uh you know the a villain That's event a one resource draw cards up to your hand size this was a card that uh was the mvp at worlds 2017 mm -hmm. um it was the it was the boundless ambition drawing into a car a handful of uh, zero and one cost cards um which allowed the tusk uh the vader raider to continue to pummel down on i think it was a three wide phasma and some something change like that yeah phasma trooper something deck and i mean balance ambition uh has come and gone and it hasn't seen play recently um because i think the mill is so such a concern right now that yeah. drawing additional cards and playing additional cards oh quickly, yeah uh is a challenge but um i could see a thrawn snoke deck uh boundless ambitioning into a bunch of more of it um vehicles to try to get things out faster well, it's so the try. timing of that card too i mean yeah. the timing is everything on that card for sure you know uh, and let go ahead if yeah if, if just to say something real quick about it if, uh, you could play like a boundless ambition in a like uh kylo anakin opening hand uh and try to really hit a lot of those zero oh, one yeah. costs because that that deck needs to ramp real quick and if you can mm -hmm. if you can get your weapons and get your uh mitigations quickly uh i think yeah, boundless ambitions can still do some work, I believe. For sure. Um, lastly, I think a card that has actually been reprinted in the new uh, that will survive rotation. Oh uh, yeah, is flank because flank was uh, printed in the two player set. In that two player set, I forgot about that. Um, play only if you have more ready characters than an opponent. Remove one of those opponent's dice. And I think this is a key card that's uh, it's important now because the game has slowed down and will probably will continue to slow down. Um, to see this as a a uh, key removal piece that um, by choosing to activate your character before your opponent, you are susceptible to flank. And that's mm -hmm. uh, kind of an interesting card to still have to play around and we'll continue to have to play around for, for another year, if not more. Um, just interesting to see how important this card has, has been and will continue to be as a gray neutral uh, card uh, for anybody who's not familiar with flank uh, one resource to play, play only if you have more ready characters than opponent, remove one of that opponent's dice. So currently in Awakenings, also in the two-player set, um, which is part of the next uh, block of cards. And I wouldn't be surprised we see it reprinted uh, ongoing. Hmm. I'm, yeah, I'm really curious to see the the reprints that we're going to ex maybe see in this or very similar version. Like, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really curious about those. I wonder if they do something where they print like a, uh, like a Legacies type expansion that mm -hmm. just introduces a bunch of those old cards back into the current set by just putting a new stamp on them. That'd be cool. And then I'm also curious if we're going to be able to play these Awakenings flanks in tournaments because the cards, see why not. the cards still in rotation, but like technically that that exact cards not in rotation. And if it's like a mm -hmm. if it's an expensive card, you know, we might run into that situation later. Where you know you can't afford the new card, but you have the old printed edition. You know, can you? That's play it? tricky. Yeah. I don't know. I think because you, you have to look to. pretty close to tell. I mean, don't you? I mean, it's the same art and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the just the symbols different on the bottom. The symbols different. Yeah. I know. In, the numbering. in other games, you're not allowed to. Yeah. Oh. Well. 
It's a money thing. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. That's it what is. CCGs are, a money thing. Mm. So if ever there was one, yeah. I I wanted I, I did some uh late night number crunching uh yesterday because I was really interested in Awakenings in the current meta. Um, the meta we have the most data about right now is U.S. Nationals, the top 32 decks that were represented there. Um, so we went through, and uh, by we, I mean me, because I'm a nerd, uh, went through and nerd. looked at the top, all top 32 decks and which Awakenings cards were in their decks. Um, of There are 32 unique cards represented in the top 32, kind oh of my. coincidental. Um, one character, two battlefields, 20 events, four supports, and five upgrades from Awakenings are still in play um, at a top-level event here in the United States. Uh, and if you take the quantities of all those cards together and the quantities of the draw decks, um, just under 20% of all draw decks were Awakenings. So considering there are five sets out, five full sets out, um, and that almost 20% of draw decks were still Awakenings cards, that shows some cool. longevity for the set. That's actually that's actually really good. Yeah. What's not good is the number of characters represented. <laughs> um, yeah. Is, the, is it poor so, Big Daddy oh. Vader? Damn it! I was gonna guess on what character it was. Yeah. If well, you can now guess. I don't on know what that I would have guessed. That. It was Trooper, uh, right? Yeah. I, yep. That's what I thought it was. Was first order, but then I accidentally yep. clicked on the slide and saw it before. I it. <laughs> it's so all good. I look like a um, liar. Spoiler, <laughs> Mike. I do. So uh, Dude, I we're gonna go through. All 32 of these cards <laughs> really quickly. Um, just talk right. about why they're popular in the meta. Um, first off, the character. Uh, yes, the first order stormtrooper was the only Awakenings character still represented in the meta here uh, at the U.S. Nationals top 32. Um, popularized in the Elite Snoke Elite Bazine first order stormtrooper deck, um, and mostly due to his point cost. I mean, that's really yeah. yep. He's cheap, but he still packs a decent punch. Yep, half 50 percent damage signs, seven health, seven points. Uh, so he slots nicely in. Uh, you know, Afra, Snoke Afra Battle Droid had to slot in that six point Battle Droid to make it work. Um, but uh, Snoke Bazine was able to slot in a seven point character. And if you want access to red, this is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. Snoke, still one of the best uh, non unique red characters on the villain side. Snoke Afra one point over plot cost with a first order Stormtrooper. There you go. Ta da! <laughs> Boom. Going back to last week. Going back, yeah, going back to last week's show. But oh, his die sides are so good, 50%. Uh, yeah. It does suck that he has that one pay side, but you can take care of that with a battlefield or something else. Yeah. And yeah, he has a resource uh, that side. That one's not too hard to get. That's like one of my that's one of my requirements for putting a character in a lineup is it's got to it's got to have at least one resource side. And uh that first order stormtrooper definitely has it. He's a cool character. Yeah, I'm I'm really good at hitting those two blank sides. I'm real good at that. <laughs> All right, next card. Um, so the battle fields that were represented uh, in the top 32, five copies of Emperor's Throne Room, of course, popularized by uh, the crap decks, Kylo, um, mm -hmm. Kylo Price, uh, as well as Snoke Kylo, um, any of those kind of villain blue heavy decks uh, using sides. Emperor's Throne Room. Special sides. Um, Imperial Armory, also uh, one player played that. Uh, I interesting. I've always liked Emperor Stone Groom. I find myself going back to that one a lot. I don't know. Maybe it's just a comfort level with it. It's great. And the alt art one is the alt art card is awesome for that. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Um Imperial's Ar Imperial Armory, uh great card. Uh you know, you don't think about that one too much, but that can easily get you two drops down for one at the end of your turn. Yeah, it's yeah. a good resource saver and in a in a yeah. As we're the game's developing, resources are so critical. Uh, anything to help save a resource, um, help get something out, a big something out uh, sooner with something like this. Mm -hmm. um, it's good. Uh, so moving on into the upgrades. So this is where it kind of gets exciting. So our only red upgrade that was played from Awakenings is the cheapest blaster in the game. I like that blaster. We've got our DH-17 Blaster Pistol, uh, another 50% uh, damage side mm -hmm. uh, upgrade. One resource, so it can come out really early on. Mm -hmm. um, Easy to overwrite. But it, mm -hmm. like You get it out early so that you have that extra die and you have that extra damage, and then it saves you resources later when you overwrite it. Yeah. Uh, seen a lot in that Bazine deck, and I think that's why there, um, six copies of it were, were in the mm -hmm. top 32 total. Uh, 
nice cheap upgrade. Mm -hmm. Just that's really it. I mean, it's interesting to see that this uh, particular one uh, is the one is the blue is the red upgrade that is represented. Yeah. So, uh, from a blue standpoint, it should be no surprise to my kill the three blue upgrades that were represented the most, mm -hmm. um, or actually at all. Uh, seven or eight copies of each were in play in the top 32 um, of these wonderful blue upgrades. Wonderful. And you know, I I haven't seen, like, I, I know clearly it was there, but, like, Mind Probe's not one that I I ran into a lot. I was So I'm actually surprised by the, that there were eight of those. Uh, in a day and age where you got huge vehicles, a force throw special. Uh, that makes sense. Is just ridiculous. And uh, that's very true, which is why it was dangerous in the first place. It, yeah, uh, that card was played so much uh, back in Awakenings. <clears throat> really, the first couple sets, you saw that card uh, come out and you were very scared to roll in anything with a like a heavy damage side because mm -hmm. it would yep. almost instantly get force thrown back at you with that 33% yeah. chance of hitting that special. I mean, it just, can you imagine? I mean, I, really, I think force throw was an, and even mind probe, mind probes kind of like a counter to after and after's draw me uh, mechanism that was going on there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Having force throw on the table to die in the pool. And then they roll in planetary bombardment and you claim with emperor's throne room. You remove the seven whatever they get on the table and then do it back to them. Yeah, like having Forrester on the table is 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 crippling, uh, especially with that battlefield. So uh, interesting, interesting that um, that it was the it was this sort of of course Sith Holocron to get those two cards out cheap um, in those in those mono blue decks the the mm -hmm. Snow Kylo uh, the Kylo Price uh, those are the decks that we're seeing these these types of upgrades played. Um, so pretty interesting. Uh, and last but not least, on the yellow side, it probably comes as no surprise as these are our uh, protection cards. Um, thank you, Mill, uh, for bringing these mm. cards, uh, keeping them around. Second chance has never gone away, honestly. Mm -mm. No, I don't think it has. Horrible card. Horrible I love that card. card. <laughs> what are you talking about? Glad to see it. I gone. love the reaction. The very first tournament I played in, I played second chance on Han, and the reaction on my opponent's face was exactly what I wanted. Like. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then once, when it's played back on you the other side it sucks but i i enjoyed that moment once second chance is played you really gotta hunker down haha <laughs> but um wah, wah. It was, my no, kill was, everybody there was Three only uh, there was only one <laughs> copy of hunker down in play at this event uh which is interesting that someone even brought it uh you don't see hunker yeah. down mm -mm. um the meta, I mean, the vehicle meta is very range heavy, so I understand how Hunker Down could be uh, a thing you may want to play, but mm -hmm. I don't know. But second chance, of course, um, every mill deck had second chance. And it's going to hurt when that rotates out. I mean, it's it's going to make a big difference when that rotates it's out, I be think. It's going to awesome. <laughs> so you can probably guess on the support side of things where we were at uh the the red support saw um the big vehicles come in play uh lots of atst action with our um snoke vehicle based yep. decks Horrible um card. huge huge uh oh. upgrade or huge support um with the three four and five range sides the two shields and the two specials that discard a support from play uh which you know is cool when uh dealing with other support based decks right um the That's only smart really put in there not many cards that can deal with removing supports off the table so exactly um, and here we had one in, the, in our first set that was really expensive to play but now that we can get it out um one vehicle deck had a first order tie i thought that was <laughs> an interesting shock yeah uh yeah, ATST, the first card we saw with uh, six sides, no blinks. No blinkies. Wow, fun fact. Fun fact. That is true. My kill, and, everybody. And the most expensive uh, support we ever saw. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Can't wait to see seven resources on a, on a card. Well, I know, and we all were like, how, how would you ever get the resources for that? Well, you I never was. did, right? No, you never, you, that was just to... a card that you pitched to re-roll. You had yeah. to. You would have to not spend for three turns. Not until um. Oh shoot! What's that? So that override support. Uh, yellow. Oh. The houndstooth. Yeah. That without until that card came out, I don't think ATST was really viable. Or stock freighter or something. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Totally. Totally right. Uh, 
Yeah. Um, on the yellow and blue side, only one support each was represented from Awakenings at the U.S. Nationals Top 32. Um, on the yellow side, probably no surprise, Backup Muscle. That's a great card. Still a great card from Awakenings. So it's, it's slow. It is, but, but it it's the sneaky. speed. But it's sneaky. It's the speed of the meta. It's easy to forget quad about jumper, it. Like, that's right, quad jumper. Yeah. I feel like that card's easy to forget about when, especially if it's if you've got it in a deck that has, well, if you have it in that, that villain vehicle, if there's a lot of other supports down, it kind of gets lost back there and you forget that they have that. And when it's coming down to a neck and neck game, sometimes that's that's all it takes. And mm -hmm. It is slow. I don't shields. disagree with that. Yeah. Yep. And then the shield, have, and like when now the shields are important, this yep. this is a support that's back to being important again. And it binds all things uh, to help those that's um, huge. mono blue Love decks card. deal yeah, with huge. lack of resource. I am gonna, I'm gonna miss this card. I'm gonna have a little uh, memorial, I think, for it binds all things. <laughs> it's gonna hurt. Oh. It's really gonna hurt a lot of blue. Oh, I think so. It's I hot. agree. Yeah, because you hit a, you hit like a single. It binds all things, or two. It binds all things firsthand. Like, oh, um, that's 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 the worst. When somebody gets free, two down, boom, boom. gosh. Um, so now, last but not least, of course, we'll get into the events. The events are the big uh, bulk of the cards from Awakenings that we saw played at the top 32 in the U.S. Nationals. That makes sense. Um, anybody have, uh, of course, the la we will reveal at the very end what was the most represented card at bum, U.S. Bum, Nationals. Bum. If anybody has any guesses, you can throw them in the chat. We asked the Chance Cube Hangout. No one had the answer. Um, so uh, we will continue to go through as we ramp up to what was the what was the most represented card. Um, the the blue event suite was was the most popular. Um, we had a lot of a uh, lot of random blue events peppered into the decks. Uh, one copy each of Force Misdirection, Repost, Anticipate, Intimidate, and Isolation, which is sad. I love because all those. Intimidate and Isolation uh, were were I think events we saw a lot of play. Oh uh, yeah, even up to a couple sets ago. You know, it's weird. You, you you stack your deck with like a bunch of intimidates and uh, frightens and stuff, and then you don't see any shields. So I, so, I can yeah. understand why it was only a single copy of these played because it's just it's weird. Shields are like kind of in a weird spot. Like you think you would see a lot more of them, and you're really not. So mm. yeah, but that isolation is such a cheap removal. Like you just have to for those, mm -hmm. especially mono blue decks. It's one cost to remove a die on all you have to do is spot a blue character. Mm -hmm. So I'm surprised because that's, yeah, that's one of my favorites to throw into a, a blue. Yeah. And actually, so is Force Misdirection, really. I really like that card, too. Yeah. Uh, real quick to uh, answer uh, Rufus. Yeah, Quad Jumper was SOR, but uh, we were just saying that uh, it, the other card wasn't viable until, uh, until Quad Jumper came out, so you could override mm. it. Yeah, makes sense. Real quick to um, the chat. Yeah, and I think this also represents, uh, you know, you get these little singles that pepper into different decks, and this represents, you know, the difference in deck building and difference in styles of people um, and their play. So uh, I was actually shocked to see the, uh, I was actually shocked to see a number of one ofs in decks at, at the top. Um, I'm never a big fan of one ofs, but, Me you know, some people are. Um, getting into more uh, played cards, uh, probably played because you know deck lists are being shared amongst other uh, amongst people and, and common players. Um, abandon all hope. Uh, two resources, villain, force an opponent to choose to either lose all their hand or all their resources. Um, killer decision. I do to like make. that card. Uh, I didn't play that until fairly recently, and then. When you get it out at like the beginning of a turn, you know, when they've or they've already spent something and they die your hand. I'm surprised you actually don't. Well, it is a two cost, so I guess it, it probably does take up too much space in a mill deck, but yeah. um, I once I played that, I was like, whoo, I played at the right time. That is a handy card. Mm -hmm. And I think Abandoned All Hope may have been teched into villain decks to combat mill, right? Because mm -hmm. mill can't ramp off really well without some resources to help it pay mm -hmm. for its upgrades um and without a hand then it's you know it's no good either you get, lose all the control cards mm -hmm. um same with mind trick mind trick's another card that uh forces your opponent to make a decision so i like that both these cards were well represented and and actually put the burden on your opponent to kind of hurt mm -hmm. themselves uh, mind trick two resources neutral blue events spot a blue character to force an opponent to split their dice pool into two groups of any size choose one group and remove all dice in it such a great card one of my I always chose poorly 
it's my favorite uh two drop uh mitigation card for sure mm-hmm. if i were mm-hmm. to put any two drop mitigation it's going to be mind trick yeah there's a lot of uh there's a lot of talk that uh between mind trick and uh beguile beguile is kind of oh, like the, the replacement from <laughs> bejeweled mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, but mind trick's always a great i mean obviously uh there were nine copies amongst those uh top 32 decks so yeah. hmm. uh you know great uh Rising from the ashes and definitely a meta call. Deflect. Yeah. Lots of deflect. 13 copies amongst the top 32. It's, um, that means it's, that in, card it's had, in at least six decks. That card had gone away. Like, mm-hmm. great against vehicle. And there's like a, what you're seeing is a, just a, so much vehicle. So, yeah. Yep. Uh, Makes sense. Great. Yeah. Me, great meta choice. All right, number one blue card represented in the top 32. Dun, dun, dun. Feel, Feel your anger. anger. They were they were combat your Gungans, Kim. They were there. Yeah. It, was a, it was a Gungan meta call. That's what I think it was, too. <laughs> that card <laughs> that card wreaks havoc on me though. Like I, I, I and I put card. it in decks to use it. Like I uh anytime I built a villain deck with blue, that sucker was in there. Right. Well, I mean think Phil Your Anger um being able to remove dice based on the number of blanks an opponent rolls. Like with the number of chance cubes that are out there right now. Oh yeah. We're right here. All three of us right here. Oh, wrong chance cubes. Axel got it. He guessed. He guessed right. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um so uh, moving into the grays uh some familiar favorites here um actually i'm surprised that we didn't see more close quarter assaults play close quarter assault has been a card that's been long talked about in the meta mm-hmm. um and only one player played two copies of it <laughs> uh which i was shocked and maybe it's because we're yeah. kind of we're not um i mean i think or i guess we're not really melee heavy i mean even the blue decks even the mono blue villain decks were uh were kind of uh special heavy in a way mm-hmm. yeah S- snoke has no melee side so i i miss this one being important but i think it is mm-hmm. it's funny uh whenever i do like my deck building close quarters assaults is one of those like two ofs i throw in and as i thin my deck it's always one of the first ones to go to a one drop and then it eventually just gets dropped out completely mm-hmm. it, it, you know it's zero cost so it's really effective in that sense but Mm-hmm. You know, melee is just not. I mean, it's not a thing. It's not in fashion. No, it's not no, in fashion. Not in fashion. Yeah. Um, all in and flank were also represented. Uh, all in's in. another good one that yeah. I enjoyed playing, and then I feel like it kind of disappeared for a little bit. But my apology. That was a semi truck, just for the record, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe a car, but it was something. Um. Yeah, because all in, I mean, like, it lets you resolve all your die in any order that you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think very important uh, in decks that have lots of focus sides, especially yeah. Snoke, Snoke decks, uh, an all in into a couple focus can can really uh, fix your other dice as you continue to resolve. Flank, again, we talked about earlier, um, mm-hmm. uh, important in this three wide character meta uh, as a cheap removal. Yeah. Uh, really? Moving into the. Go ahead. Real quick, close quarters assault. I think that was a choice to when uh, the Kylo Anakin scene was real big, and the mm-hmm. Kylo trick was like you need to add some gray into your mono deck. Yes. So that was like one of those ones where you kind of threw it in there. Really, all of these, all in flank. It was really to add that spice that gray in there. And uh, mm-hmm. now that you're not really seeing a ton of that, that's like the first thing that's getting cut to go back that. to your mono that's a, that's a very good point boom uh, on our on our red side um, we actually uh, had uh, one player play closing the net Ooh, that's not one I see a lot of I'm not sure I can tell you what that does without reading it so I'm going to read it uh, oh there it is one resource cost villain event uh, force an opponent to choose and remove one of their dice you may place this event on the bottom of your deck instead of discarding it mm-hmm I, I feel like playing... that's a mill. That's a mill car call. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. So when I was teching, uh, going into, uh, <clears throat> into like my store champions and stuff, I was teching against mill, and I was putting closing the nets in. 
for that. It's a good idea. That exact reason, so that I could drop it to the bottom, and then of course I see none. All I see is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it's a one cost and and removes a die. That's not bad. Yeah, the meta like the meta shifted hard between Gen Con and then when I got back in Store Champions, like it, it just went like yeah, mill craze like instantly back into vehicle, and it was like I just kind of missed that shift and. Mm-hmm. But that's the this is the first time I had ever played closing the net like right before it gets dropped out because because of the <laughs> red yeah, figures. Um, these other two Sorry. red cards we talked we talked about earlier: tactical mastery and the best defense. Uh, very you know popular cards. Saw a little bit of play uh, at, at U.S. Nationals in the top thirty-two. Uh, but again, great awakenings cards to still get kind of one last go. Tactical mastery has been reprinted uh, in the two-player set. So, oh, that's right. Oh, I forgot about it is, that. It is still, it is still around. My kill, you can still tactical mastery your villain. Hey, oh, still tactical mastery, Mac Kuzino. Um, and then the most played red card, uh, made popular by the um, Snoke Afro decks. Dun, dun, dun. Afro, not Afros. Afro deck probe. Yeah, surprisingly, uh, because of the popularity of Snoke Afro Battle Droid, um, Probe was a very key event for them. A zero-cost uh, villain event that looks at two cards in the opponent's hand, discards them if they are events. Interesting. You know, I would have saw. I would have said uh, best defense. All yeah. Right. So I, I think this was. I think this was a mill tech as well. Because Mill relies so heavily on events in their hand, mm-hmm. um, that it's more likely to pull from. I think Probe against a villain deck is is not as likely to hit two events or even yeah. one. Um, but I don't know. I mean, we are we are definitely our deck building has swung from you know fifty percent upgrades, fifty percent events to like six upgrades and fifteen events. Yeah. yeah. So Probe is Probe is good. I, I guess, especially if they're holding on to like the two last cards in their hand. Yeah, I. Uh, that's I, I'm still very surprised that we saw that big of a showing on this card. It, yeah, no reprint yet on this. No, mm-hmm. and I think and it exclusively was in the uh, that I could tell was exclusively in the Snoke Afro decks, which there were. Uh, were there six of those? I don't think there were six. I think there were only five. So someone else played Probe as well. Hmm. But anyways, uh, there you go. Uh, cool. Moving into the last color, uh, which also contains our most represented card at U.S. Nationals, yellow. Um, Kim's favorite, Electroshock. Yeah, told you. Uh, Good card. Was in there. Uh, I'm surprised. I'm actually a little surprised. I I feel like there's more. There's there's better removal now, but yeah, maybe not cheaper, especially if you're heavy yeah. on the yellow side. It is a solid one cost removal of mm-hmm. a two or lower, and uh, two is like really that middle of the road where. You there's a there's a ton of it out there. Your chances of hitting a two or lower are really good. Yeah, and two or lower include specials. For sure, which is and a very special heavy uh, meta right now. Yeah. Still, yeah. yeah. Goodbye, um, Electroshock. And hyperspace jump, uh, the the Mill King's favorite way or to get. Happy out of to her. see that sucker go. Buy like buy a hyperspace jump. I, that does not make me sad at all. Not at all. Right. I hate that card. You may... <laughs> I'm always saying that card. Remember and, when it was in the Poe, like the loop? Oh yeah, well hyperspace. Yeah, the hyperloop, hyperspace loop. That's yeah. Yeah. I now that, refer to that. I use that term at work for a thing that happens in the system, and I'm the only one that gets it. But I enjoy it. <laughs> it's hyperloop. I say it gets in a hyper. I say it gets in a hyperloop, and people are like, oh, okay. Um. So. Surprisingly, yellow events were very underrepresented in terms of quantity. However. There was one yellow event that was the most represented card from Awakenings in the top 32, seen in numerous decks all over the events. Such a good card. I it love really it. Is. He doesn't like you. He doesn't. And I think someone in the chat got it right. Easy pick. Rufus? I Yes, Rufus, Rufus McDoofus. <laughs> That's a great name. That's uh, fantastic. Guess, guess correctly, uh, <laughs> he doesn't like you. 22 copies shown in the top wow. 32 decks. That means 11 decks had two copies at least, if not more with the uh, single drops. Um, yeah, that's a great card. It's such a great card. That's awesome. I mean, it's it's a zero-cost removal. 
Mm -hmm. that all you're doing is getting rid of one of your dice, which is most likely dead, to get rid of any mm -hmm. of an opponent's dice. And so much removal right now is dependent on um, whether it's a character upgrade die, its cost, its uh, color, it, you ha you having something on the table. Um, this is this one. This one doesn't discriminate. I feel like that card's why Awakening never picked up because you want that dead die on the table to use this card. Mm. Yeah, use yeah. Uh, surprising that it is a villain card, um, which means that, of course, villains were were a little on the heavier side uh, at U.S. Nationals this time around than the heroes, uh, which is a little surprising considering how heroes uh, was on a power swing recently. Mm -hmm. But here we are. He doesn't like you. It's certainly one of my favorites. Uh, certainly one of those cards that you pull out almost every time you're building a yellow villain deck. Mm hmm. So there's no, there's really no better removal uh, for a single die removal um, for per value uh, than this particular card. So could awesome. not agree more. So really awesome uh, showing here. Awakenings uh, set. We've got one more uh, set coming out before this whole set goes away from the standard rotation. Uh, we are anxiously awaiting uh, some sort of uh, information as to. Uh, how infinite is going to be supported and in what way. Uh, we know it'll have a holocron. Uh, we know that uh, GQs should be uh, doing some sort of infinite event. Um, you know, other card games have made, had, had made, have made uh, kind of vintage type play styles important. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be interesting to see if, you know, FFG's uh, organized play is not as robust right now to support that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. But I think the players can make up for that. I think so vintage we'll vintage needs to have a whole different format. More draw cards, a sideboard, and best two or three. I think is the yeah. Way it's gonna have to. to played. I would agree with that. Yeah, sideboard. I'm looking to sideboard. Everybody root for sideboard. <laughs> Let's get it. I love it. Cool. Now I'm look. Yeah. Now I'm quickly looking because we also pose this this. And ask you guys too what cards you were sad to see. I'm seeing if there's any bait are we and switch. Are we moving on to the question? Well, not we're not necessarily. We're waxing, we're waxing on infinite right now. Uh, Rufus right. Doofus says uh, should be one copy max of each card. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that would be cool too. Isn't Commander like that? I think that's how Commander is for uh, Magic the Gathering. One copy of each hundred card uh, draw deck. I think yes. I have a couple buddies who play it a lot, and I'm trying to remember. So, I have they're trying to get me into yep. it, and I just yeah, it is Rufus McDoofus. I can only support one CCG at a time. <laughs> so, uh, so hopefully that information was interesting uh, in terms of <laughs> uh, Awakenings cards. I think those are definitely uh, 32 and plus our favorites in there. Uh, great cards from Awakenings to still show. Um, I did a quick look at all the characters, and there's really nothing that's viable anymore. Um, it's just they're just not powerful enough to keep up with the current uh, current swath of characters that are out there. Um, but uh, let's go ahead to the question of the week and uh, find out what you guys thought. There can be no mistakes this time. And we're live. All right. So I segued early. So now I'm unsegwaying and doing it correctly. But uh, we asked you guys what... what bleh, 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 bleh. I'll rewind that. With only one more set before the first rotation, what card from Awakenings do you use mo most often that you'll hate to see go? So we talked about a bunch of them. Um, so I was kind of looking to see what else you guys were going to miss. Jason did, Griffin's, huh? You're going to what? I, I did notice that some people uh, saw the word Awakenings and, and looked at the whole Awakenings block. So they picked some cards that were not from Awakenings the set, which is forgivable. I understand. Right, that's fair. There's a, there's a misnomer in uh, the way the sets are, are, are and blocks the, are named. but The whole block will rotate though, right? Oh, the whole block will rotate, yes. Okay, okay. At the same time? Yes. But I like, okay, for, for half a second I went, do I have that completely wrong in my head? I hope you have it completely right, I just confused you. Ugh, it doesn't take much. Give so, Jason show. Griffin mentioned Bait and Switch, we didn't talk about that one. But it mentioned that it was such a surprise threat, or a surprise treat. At first I thought he said threat. Lots of he doesn't like use. Ancient Lightsaber, that's not, wait a minute. 
That's too new. Uh, oh, Ancient is that an awakening? Is, it's Spirit of Rebellion. Or no, yeah, you're right. Or spirit, Empire, Spirit. I feel like you're making a cheer. Empire, Spirit. Empire, <laughs> I don't know spirit. What's happening right now. Another bait and switch. Rise again, which was huge for a very, very, very short amount of time. Also spirit. And Palpatine. Cad Bane, who just never really got his just Empire never really War. got his feet under him. Never I don't think anybody actually said any Awakenings cards in this list. Your Destiny did say DH seventeen blaster. Still Thank the you. best gun in the galaxy. No. Force illusion. Nope, not awakenings. Hyperspace jump, we got one of those. And Michael had also said all in. Very good. Justin, of course, mentioned second second chance. Yep. Uh, let's see. Oh, Sienna is a. I didn't think about that. Sienna is a character that will rotate, but not. She's not just awakenings. Hmm. Cunning. That is awakenings. We that didn't is talk awakenings. about cunning. Wow, and there it, were no cunnings represented at U.S. Nationals top thirty-two. No, well, that's and surprising. It, that's a because of that player. ability to duplicate the special. Yeah, I'm mm. surprised. I mean, I guess Yoda Honda is the only really major deck right now that's making it playable, and there were none at US mm. Nats. So, uh, Jamie had mentioned Force Throw, so fun to play, and I love getting special and watching my opponent not roll any of their uh, dice. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that. Yep, 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 yep. Um, and then another Force Direction will be messed in my Blue Hero decks. Mm. Oh yeah, somebody Y Wing and Hyperspace Jump will be in their vehicle missed in their vehicle deck. Yep. And then uh, he had mentioned like and I'm sad about this too, his wife's E Leia E Han too. They'll miss Leia. Oh. Leia goes Leia oh, never God. that Leia just never got she didn't really get her feet under her either. No. No, she didn't. I so, wanted that Leia and Han to be so good and they Well, Always, we always love reading uh, the responses that are on our Facebook page. Every week, we have a new question. Keep them coming. Um, keep them coming. Uh, we'll be ha we'll read as many as we can on the show. Uh, thanks again. We we actually talked a little bit longer because we had so many Awakenings cards to talk about this week. Um, but it was really exciting. Uh, it's nice to kind of fill in this time between the sets with uh, you know little, at least domestically little competitive play, um, and just and and do some remembrance as we uh, we come upon the. A memoriam here of, of these sets that are going to be <laughs> rotating out uh, in about four months. Still, still a ways away, so still some time to get some good play. Yeah. Uh, so again, uh, thanks to everyone on the chat. Thanks to everybody who's watching live. We really appreciate you coming to join us here on Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Daylight Time, whatever time. Same bat time, time, same bat channel. Same bat time, uh, same bat channel. We'll be here next week. Uh, what they said, unless my wife goes into labor, in which case I won't be here. But the plan is for me to actually not miss a show this uh, for the next few weeks. All right. So, watching that happen. I think we'll understand if you happen. To right. <laughs> so, everybody, if you head over to our Facebook Sign page, uh, our question for episode 104, we continue our look at cards we love now that will go away when the rotation kicks in. What cards from Spirit of Rebellion do you hope get reprinted in a future set? See how I flipped that around? I see what you did there. Reprinted. These are the cards you want to see come back, not the cards that are sorely abused currently. Hmm. So think about it. Uh, hmm. Next week, Spirit of Rebellion, uh, and all the news that's fit to print. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Have a good week, guys. Peace Bye. out, y'all. Catch you next week. This has been the Chance Cube, a Star Wars Destiny podcast, a nonprofit organization dedicated to building community through gaming. Visit our website for all things Star Wars Destiny, including our price watch, meta tracker, and latest articles from the Chance Cube family. Find our latest videos on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and visit us at patreon.com slash thechancecube. Your patronage allows us to grow this program and help us give back to the gaming community by sponsoring events, giveaways, and supporting our own community building initiatives. This is Mike Hill, the voice of the Chance Cube. Thanks for listening. The Chance Cube is not affiliated with Fantasy Flight Games, Lucasfilms, or the Walt Disney Company.